you're probably wondering, why am I clapping? I'm clapping because the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie Roseman just keep on letting us down, people. They keep on letting us down. Now, I would have made a video sooner, obviously, but I was at work and couldn't be helped. But I will say I've had a lot of time to think about this and I'm just, I'm just going to let it all out. I'm just going to let it all out. Let me start off by saying this. I love the Philadelphia Eagles. Like I love this team. Like you, let me, let me tell you how this all came about. And I've told this story before, but I'll give you a quick version of it. I was ninth grade. My dad told me I had to play football. And so in order to make me a better player, I guess, he made me start to watch the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I remember I lived in Delaware, right? So we got all the Eagles games and stuff. So he made me start watching the Eagles. And this was in 2010. So this was the Michael Vick years, right? And I didn't really click with the team like that. Didn't really want to play any sports. I just, you know, wanted to go to school, whatever, come home and get on with my life, you know? Wanted to be a kid still. Wanted to watch cartoons, all that stuff. I wasn't in sports, you know? But, you know, football was okay. But I really started paying attention to the Philadelphia Eagles. And like you all know the story. I didn't really start paying attention and watching consistently like I do now until about the 2013-2014 season when I met my best friend who is a Dallas Cowboy fan. So there's that. But ever since 2010, man, I've I've been hooked. I've been hooked. And I just I love the colors of this team. I I I I, I love singing the fight song. You know, I love the fact that nobody really likes us. I don't like the fact that nobody respects us. That's a different thing. You can you you can hate us all you want. That's fine. But you don't show better respect us. And and that's my big thing. But I I I I, I genuinely hate the Dallas Cowboys. Like I can't stand the star. I can't stand their colors. I can't stand their uniform. I can't stand Jerry Jones. He makes me laugh. Jason Garrett, whenever he starts clapping, makes me laugh. Like I genuinely dislike everything about that organization. Right? And I really haven't had any problems with the Giants or the Redskins because we've pretty much owned them. Well more the Giants. Redskins, you know you know, when we had that loser streak, I was like, bro, how do we keep losing to the Redskins? But whatever. So, but I'm a true Philadelphia Eagles fan, man. And it just hurts me. It genuinely hurts me when this team suffers. It genuinely hurts me when I see other teams succeeding and we're always near the middle of the pack or below. It genuinely hurts me because I look at those teams and I'm like, man, how are they doing it? Man, how are they always succeeding? Man, how are they always doing the things that they're doing to stay on top? Man, I want a dynasty. Man, I want a Super Bowl. And then 2017 happened. And we won the Super Bowl. And it was so, so beautiful. Like, I couldn't... I, I couldn't even put it into words what it felt to not just have to play it on Madden and go... Man, when, when, I'm going, when am I going to see this? Like, it was the most beautiful thing. It's the literally the best thing that's ever happened to me. Watching the Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl. When Carson Wentz went down that year, I was like, bro, there goes my one chance to see a Super Bowl, man. There it goes. But we that year, we just could not be stopped. We wouldn't take no for an answer. But since that time, we've gone back to the old ways. We just have. We've gone 500 since that time. We've gone, what, 13 and 12? 13 and 12. That's what we've gone. Or 13 and 11. Either way, we've gone pretty much average. 
The Philadelphia Eagles this year right now are what? Four and four. They're an average football team. This is an and let's be honest, this is an average franchise. I mean, this we're the Cleveland Browns, but we just had a few reading we've had winning seasons, right? That's what we are. We're a better version of the Cleveland Browns. Where the Cleveland Browns, they sucked and were trash for years. But with the Philadelphia Eagles, they have had winning records. They've had shots in the playoffs. They've had shots to win Super Bowls. And they just they just always fell short. Because they could never get the job done. All those years, I mean, think about it, literally, all those years with Andy Reid and Donovan, and you couldn't get it done? All these years at the end with Michael Vick and the explosion of that Eagles offense, and you couldn't get it done? When the Eagles had Chip Kelly, and they're supposed to be this potent offense, you couldn't get it done? And then you get Doug Peterson, and you get it done. But then since you've gotten it done, you haven't done anything. And this team was lucky to make the playoffs last year. I wrote them off. I said, I'm done. This team is trash. They don't want it. But they pulled it together at the end of the season. And on top of that, Carson Wentz went down again. But they pulled it together at the end of the season. They made a playoff run. They won a playoff game. Should have won two playoff games. Should have been in the NFC Championship game. But they pulled it together. And now here we are in 2019. The team is 4-4, four and four, one game back in the NFC East. And the Eagles have a chance to make themselves better. But they don't do it. Why? Because they want to save on some draft picks. All of a sudden, draft picks are just worth everything. Like, we need these draft picks. I understand that getting a 2 for Chris Harris is way overpriced. Okay. I understand a two for Robbie Anderson, way overpriced. Like, I don't know what they're smoking over there in, the, in New York to think that someone's going to give him a two for Robbie Anderson. But to make not one single move. I mean, do you know how many people were available this year and we didn't make... And, and, and I, you could say, what, the Eagles were in on all of them. They were interested in all of them. They were they tried to look and get all of them. I mean, we used to call Howie Roseman one of the top GMs in the NFL. Like, this man could not be stopped. He could figure out a way to make a deal. And I know when you make a trade, it has to be both sides. It's got to be both sides. I get it. You got to come to an agreement. But to not make one? I said when the Jalen Ramsey trade happened... Two ones and a fourth, that's nothing. That's nothing. When Micah Fitzpatrick was available and they and, and, and they the Steelers traded him for a first round pick, he's been great for them. He's made their defense better. When when Javion Clowney was available, I said, let's go get him. Oh no, we don't need him. We got Derek Barnell, we got Brandon Graham. And for the longest time, this defensive line was not getting any pressure. And I said, we missed out on this guy? I wasn't really in on Melvin Gordon, but, you know, he was out there. And at the time, Jordan Howard, we were like, is this really working? No, Peterson really don't want to run him. I don't know. That was the only one that didn't make no sense. But the Robbie Anderson one, I'm like, why do you trust Deshaun Jackson? Why? This man could tweak something and then be done for the rest of the season. And now we're stuck with nothing. And all I keep hearing people say is, well, I don't want to give a second round pick for someone who's going to be here for eight games. What? Robbie Anderson could be the future. That's how good he is. He may not be Deshaun Jackson good. He could be a Tory Smith. And we know how that worked out with Tory Smith. We got J.J. Arthago Whiteside. Now, sure, he can't get on the field, but, I mean, he's supposed to be Alshon type. We've got Dallas Goddard. We've got Miles Sanders. We've got Andre Dillard. So, it's not like we don't have things prepared for the future. Why wouldn't you, I mean, get this guy in the building. Now, you got him for eight games. Just see, just, just to see, just to see what he is. If he's, okay, you're saying, okay, 
I, if I'm Howie, I'm trying to talk the Jets down to like a three. Give me, come on, bro. We used to work together. Let me have him for a three, not a two. You drunk or something? Let me get him for a three. A three, I'm fine with that. We got two threes. I can, I can spare a three. But he could have been the future. And now we don't have him. So now what? So now we don't get anything. So now we stick with the team that we have. And I don't trust Deshaun Jackson. Matter of fact, I don't trust anybody on this team to stay healthy. I, I literally don't. I'm afraid that if they touch the field, something's going to break. Something's going to end up happening and they're going to be done for the season. Like, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm legit scared. So now what? Now... We go through the rest of the year. Can the Eagles beat the Bears on Sunday? It's very possible. Yes, they can beat the Bears on Sunday. They're just a, a little bit better version of the Buffalo Bills. But they can beat the Chicago Bears. So let's say they do beat the Chicago Bears, right? Let's say they do that and they go into the bye 5-4, and four, right? Uh, let me try and give me a piece of paper here. I'm in my mom's office, so hold on a second. So let's say they beat the Bears, right? So let's say they go into the bye five and four, right? And let's just say by some miracle they beat the Patriots, right? Because I feel like that that's gonna be that's the biggest game of the year. Dallas Cowboy rematch aside. That's the biggest matchup of the year. Because you Doug himself has something to prove, and Carson has something to prove. Doug wants to prove that what he did in the Super Bowl was not a fluke, that he is on that level. So he's going to want to bring his end game. I hope he doesn't overthink it. And it really concerns me that Frank Wright isn't there. Because they got Mike Rowe. And I'll get into that in a minute. But let's just say Doug has the game of his life. Carson has the game of his life. And let's just say the Eagles somehow pull it out. So let's just say they beat the Patriots. So now they're 6-4. and four, Right? Okay. That's three wins in a row. Eagles looking real, real good right now. Okay. Then they'll have then they have the Seattle Seahawks Sunday night. I think they're gonna lose that game, but I don't see a way they're gonna win that game. Russell Wilson just owns us. So let's say they lose that game, right? So now you're at six and five. They're saying, okay, all right. Who we got next? We got the Dolphins. That's a win, right? Now we're seven and five. Okay, okay. Back on track. Back on track. Then we got who we got? Then we got the New York Giants at home. That's a win, right? That's a win. Wookie Daniel Jones. So now we're at eight and five. Then we got the Washington Redskins. We gotta go to Washington. Yeah, yeah, we gotta go to Washington. We can beat them there. That's nine and five. Okay, Eagles are cooking now. Okay, okay. Then we got the Dallas Cowboys, and you gotta win that game too. Why? Simply on the fact of pride. Pride. I mean, if you're a Philadelphia Eagle, when you are drafted, the first thing Eagles fans say to you is what? Beat Dallas. Beat Dallas. I mean, beat Dallas is on the, is coming out of their mouth first before a Super Bowl, but it's beat Dallas. You have lost to Dallas four straight times since the Dallas Cowboys have drafted on Ezekiel Elliott. He has owned us since since Amari Cooper has been on the Dallas Cowboys. Him and Dak Prescott have owned us. So for pride's sake, you will do everything in your power. And I swear to God, if you get swept by the Dallas Cowboys again, we gonna have some problems. So let's just say. For pride's sake, you beat the Dallas Cowboys because you better. You better. So now you're 10 and 5. What the heck wrong with this? So now you're 10 and 5. And then you end the season off against the New York Giants at their building. Should be no problem. And you'll end the season at 11 and 5. That should be enough to win you the division. Should be. So now what? Now you get a playoff game. Who are you facing? Uh, I expect the Packers to win their division. I'm expecting the Rams, to, not the Rams, the 49ers to win their division. So we're probably looking at either the Seahawks or the Seattle or, or the Seahawks or the Rams. 
It's possible that maybe the Vikings can get out, but in order to do that, I think they'd have to win the division. So, who would I pick? Do I think the Vikings... It comes down to this. Do I think the Vikings are better than the Rams? I'll take the Rams. So, let's just say we got to face the Rams, right? And they got to come to Philly. It's very possible... You can win that game. Maybe. I don't know. It's also very possible that you lose that game, too. You know? <sighs> Jalen Rams will be coming to Philly. That'll be his only way in here because he, he, I roped and didn't get him. Two firsts and a fourth. That's nothing to me. Here's what I fear. Is, let's say all that does happen. The Eagles go 11-5. They win the division. What I fear is... Is that they're going to keep Mike Rowe and they're going to keep Jim Schwartz because they're saying, you see, we can win with these guys. And that is what I'm scared of. I'm like, no, you can't. These guys are literally holding you back. You need a new defensive coordinator. You need a new offensive coordinator. And please don't promote Deuce Staley to OC because I don't want that either. That is what I'm scared of. What I'm also scared of is this. You're holding on to these picks. You better be. You better hit on those first four picks. You got a first round. You got a second round. And you got two threes. You better hit on all four of those. I mean, those four picks right there, they better be starting. They better be starters. But then here's the thing. What will they be? I imagine that they're going to probably be defensive players. Maybe you throw in an offensive player in the mix. But I imagine that they're going to be defensive players because we got more work doing the defensive side of the ball than we do the offensive side of the ball. Long story short, I kind of rambled on here a bit, but here's what I feel. I look at the Patriots in their dynasty. I look at the Cowboys when they had their dynasty. I look at the 49ers when they had their dynasty. I look at the Steelers when they had their dynasty. Heck, I even look at the Broncos. They didn't have a dynasty, but hey, I mean, they went to back-to-back Super Bowls and won them. I mean, it was during the end of John Wade's career, but hey. <sighs> Heck, I even look at the Buffalo Bills. They went to four straight Super Bowls. Now, they didn't win any of them, but they did go to four straight. Now, that's impossible today, but hey. I look at that, and I'm just like, the Eagles have been a middle-of-the-pack franchise. And I'm starting to feel like, and it hurts to say this, but i got to say the truth. It's starting to feel like the Eagles just caught fire at the right time and were able to capitalize on it. And, and kudos to them. You capitalized on it. You did it. But I just feel like I, I look at teams every year like the Saints and the 49ers and the Rams, and I'm like, these teams are always in it. They're always going to be there. And I'm just like, they got there through drafting. Let's just say that. But we can't draft. Name, since Harry Roseman has been back, how many draft picks have actually worked out? Maybe, see, we had five picks last year. We have five picks a year before. I don't know how many we had in 2016, but how many of the draft picks have actually worked out? Some have been meh. Others have been garbage and others have been great. But it's, I, I, I honestly look when I'm in my room and I look at that Super Bowl poster and I'm just like, man, when, when am I going to get another one, man? I, <laughs> you saw that man EDP. His stutter. That man was crying. He was like, bro, I needed that. I needed that win. Because the Eagles, to me, they just don't care. How could you not make a move? But again, but maybe they're looking at the landscape and they're saying, we can't compete with any of these teams. Let's just ride it out with what we got and we'll go from there. And I'm just like, okay, okay, fine. But how do I know what you're going to do? How do I know you're going to hit on these teams? How do I know you're going to hit on these players? How do I know they're going to pan out and work? Because half the draft picks we get don't work. So the first, the second, and the two-thirds, you better hit on those. You better be absolutely sure 
that when you pick these players and they're coming to Philadelphia, that they work out. Because, man, I'm tired of being a middle of the pack franchise. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of being average. Because that's what this franchise has been. Average. They're nothing but a better version of the Cleveland Browns. It's frustrating year after year after year to see all these teams battle it out. And we're Eagles fans. We're saying, oh, maybe next year. Oh, maybe it is next year. Oh, I mean, they're just better. I mean, honestly, don't you guys get tired of that? Because I'm tired of that. It hurts. I, I was so excited this year. I'm sure we all were. We were thinking Super Bowls. We were thinking Super Bowl number two. Here we come. But now I'm thinking, can we even win a division? Can we? And if we do, can we win a playoff game? I don't know, man. I don't know. So this video is going on too long. Those are my thoughts. I just, I love this team, but it just, it just feels like they don't love me back. And for those of you who are like, you're being unrealistic, you're being unfair to Howie and all this stuff. No, I'm not. I'm being real and I'm being truthful. And if you can't handle that, I'm sorry. We can talk about it in the comment section down below, but I'm sorry. This is how I feel. It is okay to be angry and judge something or someone when you're upset, when they do dumb stuff. Parents discipline, them. they love their kids, but they will discipline them if they do something stupid or wrong. Pet owners are the same way with dogs and cats. If they're peeing on the floor instead of going outside, if, if, if they're scratching their furniture or ripping themselves, you discipline them so they know better and not to do these dumb things. I honestly hope that when the Eagles fans, Eagles come out Sunday and, the, and it's we're in Lincoln Financial Field, I hope they just, Eagles fans just scream out, the Eagles suck or how we suck or something. So they get it through their head that we're not okay with this. We're just... Not. I'm not okay with it. I know you can't be okay with it. Let me know. When do you think the next time you're going to see a Super Bowl down Broad Street? A parade down Broad? When, when, when do you think that going to be? I just read something today on Twitter. It's been 11 years since the Phillies won something. Since the Phillies won the World Series. It's been 11 years. 11 years. God know how long it's been for the Sixers and the Flyers. And yeah, everyone's saying, you're being so unfair and grateful. Your Eagles won the Super Bowl two years ago. I mean, Dad, what? No, those are what average teams do. Teams that want to get better, teams like the Patriots and the Cowboys in the years past and the 49ers in years past, they were like, nah, man, I want to experience this more than once. And I'm not saying how we didn't make any moves this offseason to try and get us there, but I'm saying where we're at now to where we were then, you should realize that, man, this team ain't it. This team just ain't it. And then maybe they're just thinking, we can't compete with these guys. But how many more years are we going to keep saying that? How many more years do I have to wait to see the Eagles back in the Super Bowl? How many more years do I have to wait to see the Eagles have another parade down, down Broad Street, man? But y'all want to keep bringing up Super Bowl 52. Oh, we beat the Patriots 43 to 20, 43 to 33. We beat them. We beat them. So what? That was two years ago. Get over it. <sighs> okay, I'm done for real this time. Just let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'll talk to you guys later after the game Sunday. Peace out. See you later.